Hi again, everyone. Chris Tisdell here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to share with you some ways to end a proof in mathematics. So let me share my screen with you and we can get down to business. How to end a proof. All right, so let's say we're doing some mathematics and we have finished a proof. What do we do to show that a proof has ended and we're going to move on to something else? Well, if you pick up any uh, math book that's, that's popular, say even a first year or undergraduate math book, you'll see two conventions used. The first one is known as a tombstone symbol which is like a little rectangle or a little square at the end of the proof. And the other, slightly older um, convention, is to use the letters Q-E-D as an abbreviation. Hang on a minute, Chris. Did you just say tombstone? Hmm, what's with that? Well, let me show you. A tombstone, really? Yeah, it sounds a little bit um, scary, but these are all pictures of tombstones. Some of them are not filled in and some of them are filled in, depending on which book you're looking at and the style of the author. Now, this symbol was originally used in magazines and newspapers to indicate the end of an article. So this, the, you know, you, you would finish the article and you would have this little tombstone on the end. So hang on, what, what do magazines and newspapers have to do with mathematics then? How did the tombstone get from newspapers into calculus textbooks? Well, the tombstone was brought from newspapers and magazines to mathematics by this man here, Paul Halmos, a very famous mathematician of the 20th century. So he started using that symbol the tombstone symbol to indicate the end of a proof. And it spread and it spread and it spread. Now, even to the extent now that the tombstone, or sometimes called a halmos, it makes it sound less, um, less dark, if you like, that the tombstone is now replacing the old QED, the quad erat demonstrandum, which is, which is Latin for which had to be demonstrated. So Halmos's idea of this tombstone or the connection with this tombstone has really started to, to catch on now and you see it everywhere. And QED is, is sort of you know, less popular now than it was, say, uh, 50 or 100 years ago. A good question here is how do I end my proofs? If you ever go to one of my lectures or you watch one of, one of my videos and I do a proof, or even when I finish uh, an example or something like this, you'll see that I use, sometimes I use tombstones, and sometimes I, I use smiley faces to end a proof. Smiley faces? Yes, smiley faces. Why smiley faces? Because we should be happy that we've finished the proof. We should be smiling, assuming the, the working's correct and the, the, the ideas are all sort of logically laid out and, and, and true. It's something to celebrate. The end of a proof is something to celebrate. So I've got a fun kind of angle on, on how I'd like to end proofs. And, and you, if you go to my YouTube videos, you'll see this. Making math proofs more fun? You bet. Combine tombstones with smiley faces. So you've got tombstone plus smiley face at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the proof. What do you get? Well, you get a tombstone or a square smiley face. And that's the kind of thing that, that, that I like doing. It makes it a bit more fun. It's it's less uh, less dark and dreary, like a like your you know maths is belongs in a cemetery, um, but but I really like it. So what do you think? How do you end your proofs? What would you like to see at the end of uh, at the end of proofs? Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a nice day. See you later, everyone. Bye.